get it. Let's get it jumping. Let's get the party started. All right, all right, all right, all right. Number one, it's over, man. Sad news for hype beasts all over the world. Hype beasts that have been bemoaning the state of sneaker culture. The guys out there that are crying into your sneakers. It's a sad, sad day in sneakerdom because Virgil Abloh has announced that the Nike 10 collection is finally over. Um, I'm saying finally because I've had enough of seeing those shoes, but I think I think kind of um. Looking back on it from a bird's eye view or looking up from it from a bird's eye view or taking a step back from the whole situation, you have to really give the guy credit, man, for the collaboration overall and kind of really put in perspective what happened, right? Because I think it's it's I think it's cool to know of Virgil now, of who he's kind of become, right? The Louis Vuitton stuff, um, the stuff with Off White, Evian, the kind of retrospective in Chicago is happening soon, all the art stuff he's been doing at Miami at Basel, the collaboration with IKEA. You list them the dj stuff list them list them right it's long it's a long long and very list everyone knows what he's done everyone knows he's a bit of a killer but you also have to remember a few years ago maybe a couple of years ago virtual wasn't very well liked within the scene right people didn't actually like him as a person right they kind of thought he was a bit of a scumbag right and that all kind of emanated from the whole ralph loren uh pirates vision shirts right do you remember that whole malarkey when he um he kind of uh, bought out the entire stock of a particular ralph loren or ralph uh rugby shirt kind of flannel type thing screen printed pyrex uh vision or pyrex 23 on the back of him and then marked them up by four or five times the value so i think he might cop them for like 30 quid they might retail for 120 and you sell them for like 500 dollars right and people are snapping them up but then you know in most of the time the, the conversations on forums and stuff um was that you know uh Burgess being a bit of a dick and he's talking about he's you know he's talking about he's doing it all for the kids and all that shit but that he's not really doing it for the kids when he's charging kids 500 dollars for a flannel that he found for 30 dollars so he kind of wasn't really well regarded that respect people kind of thought he was a bit of a scumbag and kind of thought he was a bit of a charlatan right and then suddenly over the period of time, I think through his own effort as well, through his kind of, I think he kind of realized it might have been a bit of a misstep. I think he kind of did uh, uh, reverse, uh, rationalize the whole situation by saying that it was a kind of a play, it was a kind of art project and it was kind of a social experiment or whatever it may be, he kind of excused that whole rationale. But I didn't think at the time it was something that he needed to do. Um, I didn't think he needed to sell those for $500. I didn't think he needed to kind of keep banging on about he was for the kids and then to turn around and kind of try and sell them a, a a shirt that he bought uh, pre-made and screen printed 23 on the back of it and then sold it for $500. I don't think he needs to do that, right? Um, and it kind of did more damage and good to his image. But I think what he realized, as all kind of great and amazing people did, or do in general, he kind of realized he made a mistake. And I, I'm just rationalizing myself. I, you know, I, no, I have no inside knowledge, right? But I would assume him being a cool dude now is that he kind of realized the fuck up that he made and made amends, right? And he kind of, and the amends that he done was just to kind of um, absolutely flood the market with fucking output. He's been probably the most prolific um, output maker on the scene that I've seen in a long, 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 long time. I think obviously stuff, people, so someone like Hiroshi Fujiwara, maybe um, A Life guy, uh, maybe even Stash back in the day when he had his, when he had these kind of run. Futura had a, a mad run where every other week he had a collaboration or a release of something coming out. But I think in terms of the scope, in terms of the range, in terms of the just general uh, consistency of his output, I think Virgil's kind of probably um, untouchable, right? In kind of the modern day um, creative that's around in the scene. And why he stands out more is because in a scene nowadays, you have a lot of people, especially designers, especially people that are creatives, who are kind of um, paralyzed by... Um, uh, paralyzed by preparedness right or like they they they, they, they want to be overly prepared right they want to get things perfect before they put it put it out and it never it's never perfect right if you're a creative and you give a shit about what you're doing it's never going to be perfect that's the that's the nature of being a, cre a creative right you always think you could do better right but the no but the kind of the, what separates the kind of the greats from the good right is that they just put it out they just start saying you know what okay that's done now i'm going to move on it's out there just put it out there as it as is and Virgil's done really. Virgil's done a really good job of kind of assuming that message and kind of pushing that forward. And I think over time, just with pure will of him just putting out product, after product, after product, I think people have seen that. Okay, maybe he might have been a charlatan. Maybe he might have done a bit of a scumbag move with those kind of rug, with those kind of Ralph uh, rugby shirts he got printed with twenty three on the back of them. 
But this guy knows what the fuck what he's doing. He's really talented. He's got an ability. He's got a gift, right? He's really good at this design shit. And he has his finger on the pulse. He knows how to kind of like take stuff that's in the cultural zeitgeist and make it uh, profitable, right? He knows how to kind of commercialize buzz keywords, phrases, all that sort of shit, uh, artistic movements, uh, taste palette, taste levels, and kind of make it into a product, right? He knows how to do it. So he did it. But then also have to imagine the whole sneaker collaboration thing as well has kind of been a little bit rocky, right? There's been big brands just taking shoes that are available, changing colorways, not really doing that much about it, uh, or collaborations coming out that have subpar products, subpar materials, whatever. So him taking on the mantle of trying to do a Nike collaboration, right, out of the gate, right, as a first kind of sneaker collaboration, I think I think so, it's maybe the first sneaker collaboration that he might have done. There might have been, no, there's actually a collaboration that uh, Virgil did with Off-White with Kif, right? Do you remember those hiking boots? I think they were the first ones that were kind of like grey and pink. They might have been the first uh, kind of like footwear collaboration that Off-White did. But the first, kind or Virgil did, right? So the first kind of, oh, no, he did them on the Off-White, didn't he? Did he do them Off-White? Yeah, he did do them on the Off-White monarchy. So that might be the first collaboration, the kind of the Kif uh, boots with Off-White. I think so. Let me double check it. But... To kind of come out of the gate and then decide, you know what, my first kind of collaboration that's going to hit the mainstream is going to be with Nike. And then do to do 10 shoes, that, that took a whole lot of balls, I think, in my, in, my, in my estimation. So I think we have to kind of give the guy a lot of respect for what he did um, and the level of output. And I think now is probably the perfect time to kind of call, put it on the head, right? To kind of like say, you know what, let's just dot the I's and the T's and we're kind of done. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm right. I think this, this might have been the first cl footwear collaboration that he put together, right? Um, let me do show. You can see here on Google Images here. So Kiff and Off-White. And yeah, that's like Aaliyah, Aaliyah May, right? Aaliyah May, how do you pronounce her name? Aaliyah May, Aaliyah May again, right? In the editorial. So I think this was the first collaboration he might have done footwear-wise. I'm assuming so. I'm not, not really sure, but this might have been. But let's say let's say the Off-Whites were the first kind of commercial, sort of like, you know, first time um, in the public eye collaboration. To do that, to come out your first collaboration and hit at the park the way he did with the, with the Nike 10, insane man he smashed it levels upon levels and also the way he smashed it which was really well it kind of goes back to his whole design ethos i think is it you mentioned the interview i think it might be the five percent rule like he tries to change it is it five percent right like by five degrees or something along those kind of lines it was an amazing um way to do it taking kind of like you know uh very heralded designs or uh, silhouette models from nike's archive and kind of change them ever so slightly, right? T uh, materials inside out, switching tongues, uh, moving the sushi around, like just really subtle things. But when they come together, it's it's unmistakable from from afar. It reminds you of like old school. It reminds you of like old school uh, Kojo JP um, Air, um, Nikes, for instance, right? Um, uh, you can spot a JP a kind of specifically like a Japanese specific model of an airport of an Air Force One, right? You can spot that off from a mile away. Number one because of the colorways, number two because of the shape. You can just spot it off from a mile away. Sometimes even Air Max you can spot them from a mile off. And even in later years with the Hiroshi stuff, especially with the HTM stuff, you can spot that stuff, especially the kind of the regular kind of black Air Force Ones that are maybe made with really luxurious levers, but from afar it just look like a black Air Force One. But you can spot that shit from a mile off. And that's what he done really well with the off white collaboration. You can spot those shoes from a mile away. You can spot them shift my way. Now, it helps that some of them are, have got great colorways and them involved, but overall, it's probably one of the best collaborations of recent years. And I think for him to end it all, this is Nike the 10, for, for, for him to end it all now, I think it's probably a perfect time. I think it was kind of getting a little bit um, oversaturated on the market. I think, you know, releases coming out every other week. They're just spotting in a new pair. They're going to release for this time, blah, 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 blah. It just got a little bit too much, I think, personally, for my liking. Again, only for me. I think the sneakerheads out there are probably going to be a little bit pissed off, a little bit bummed that they're not getting any more of them, right? I think they just want the more, the better for some sneakerheads. But I think this is the perfect way to end it. And just look at the lineup, man. Forget all the. Let's ignore the iterations that have come out now recently. But I think as the first drop of sneakers that you ever put out, right, with one of the biggest sneaker brands in the world, right, and this is what you do, it's insane, right? Maybe the only dud you can say are the. I forgot what that model is at the top there, top right. That's there's probably one dud in ten shoes. That is insane. That's an insane ratio. He's got one dud in ten shoes, and and what makes it brilliant is that. With with ten with ten shoes, there's bound to be one shoe in that collection you're gonna like, and there's bound to be one shoe in a collection that everyone dislikes, right? Um, 
and it'll vary considerably depending on what kind of shoe people like or don't like because i know for sure in london for instance i saw quite a lot of people uh jumping on the air maxes the air max 90 and the air max 97 were very popular here because you know in general london or europe for the most part is an air max um we're air max lovers more so than we are kind of jordan and kind of you know the kind of air force one sort of basketball inspired shoes but they are super popular here now i've seen a real high resurgence of people wearing the converse off whites too uh, they've been kind of co-opted by all those kind of skater crew guys guys or guys just want to wear you know the kind of like our band dressing kind of dude who kind of wants to have a little bit of pop in the bottom of his uh footwear department he picks off the off-white converses because they still got the converse look but they're a little bit you know a little bit special you know see-through soul all that sort of shit amazing right then you've got the prestos right and he completely changed completely completely changed how how prestos look right completely changed them from the way the from the way the uppers are constructed to the tongue to where the swoosh placement is the text on the strap like completely reinvented the the, the presto and made it suddenly a luxe shoe it went from being something that people just buy because they kind of look cool in a, uh, in a sub during summer holiday or with shorts on right presto are probably one of the, the best shoes you can wear with kind of short shorts that kind of trend that everyone's wearing they look amazing with that kind of thing imagine like some nice paneled shorts with some nice old school um prestos with those old colorways in it especially when it's got the nice silhouette on the front of it and, uh, he hasn't got the kind of banana toe box they look great he kind of went from that and then all of a sudden now like you know their their marquee shoe and then you look at everything else the air force one like just insane the blazer even which is not something i'm particularly into but i think overall i think we'll probably look back on this time and think you know what virgil absolutely smashed this collaboration like just fucking smithereens and we're gonna look back and maybe think this might have been one of the greatest collaborations ever in terms of sneakers overall because you're looking at what's coming out now you've seen like i've seen pictures of like um i think eric costin showing a pair of the new pigeon dunks that are meant to be coming out soon they've kind of changed the colorway or upper and kind of uh put little i think it's an icy sole a see-through sole with um kind of headline clippings or clippings of newspapers from from when the pigeon dunk came out the first time around about the cues all that sort of shit you see someone like uh, Jeff Staple, who you know, highly respected guy in the scene. But you see the kind of the amount of regurgitated designs that he's make, he's putting out there. You know, the kind of laziness that he does with his collaborations. And then you see the stuff that Virgil does. And you see the stuff that Ronnie Fag does with Kiff. And you have to give those guys applauses, man. You have to kind of give them their flowers while they're still around because they go the extra mile. You can easily just rain, you can easily just rein it in, right? And just do another pigeon dunk like Jeff Staple's done, which people are going to obviously lap up, right? Or you can kind of go in there and really challenge yourself. And for a, a Virgil to challenge himself and do 10. Now, I'm not sure how the, the deal, how it kind of got uh, presented to him. I'm not sure whether or not Nike came and said, hey, we want to uh, do a promotion run with all these shoes in the next, I don't know, they kind of spec'd out a, a timeline of five years that they want to give all these shoes a kind of a bit of a, a bit of love during that kind of uh, promotion calendar, whatever it may be. And they kind of, so he would be the best guy to do it because he's the Mr. Multitask. Or if whoever Virgil just came out the bat and said, I want 10 shoes, right like whatever the wh whoever decided to do it they fucking smashed it anyway the kind of output is the one and again i got to say a lot of people out there craves there may be who are kind of you know on this whole train of like only releasing psd files of like t-shirts they want to make or of hoodies and long sleeves and all that sort of malarkey let's take a lesson from virgil you might not like what he does you might not like some of his interviews you might think he's a bit pretentious whatever it may be well what you cannot argue is that the man is an absolute workaholic right and he puts everything out he releases stuff Stuff is sold on a website. You can buy it. It can get shipped to you. You can have the things that he puts out on his Instagram. It's not just one-off stuff that he's made for himself or stuff that he's got on the other PSD file sitting on his hard drive somewhere. He makes shit happen. And I think that's kind of the stuff that you've seen regularly with the people that have been making the, the leaps and bounds this year. You look at someone like Elon Musk, right, even. I think that respect has come from there. Like, you know what I mean? We've seen the, we've seen the fruits of his labor. We've seen the fact that he's been able to show us a rough draft of what that boring tunnel is going to look like. He's shown us a rough draft. He's shown not more than a rough draft of what Tesla's going to look like, right? What space is going to look like. He's, he's, he's kind of proved this concept. And I think that's something that we kind of have to give more credit to Virgil for. But uh, going back to this Nike 10 collaboration, man, like, honestly, one of the best collections ever, man, I think overall. Um, the Jordan 1's probably still my favorite. I think that's going to go down. The Jordan 1, maybe the MX 90 might go down in kind of like a sneak collaboration history. I think overall for what they look like, especially the black MX 90 that's meant to come out soon, I think um they look absolutely amazing um in black there's something about the way they pop in black that just reminds me of like it reminds me of old school um 
Air Max 90s I used to wear back in the day when I was in school. Especially in school, there was one I used to particularly wear that I remember I borrowed from my friend to go on a link <laughs> to meet some girl that I kind of spoke to on Black Chat. It was super funny. But they were all black upper with no mesh or anything, right? Uh, tumbled leather with a metallic swoosh, metallic silver swoosh, like so good. And it had that old school shape, it had the, the, the Air Max 90 shape of yesteryear, not the one of nowadays where it's got the kind of banana toe box, it had that kind of flat silhouette shape on the outside. So, really, really flat toe box. It kind of literally like, you know, the vintage shoes they see online. Um, they, back in the day that kind of had the, an absolutely flat toe box nowadays and most shoes have that kind of pointed up thing um, but yeah but these look so good man in black I can't I can't wait to get a pair when they come out um, similar to the kind of black um, the black sort of inside out Air Force ones that came out the other day and Leon all that sort of malarkey but I think these black these black Air Max 90s look the look banging okay these are something that's 270s but yeah the Air Max 90s look so good in black I can't wait to see them IRL but yeah overall great collaboration um I think Virgil put out a little statement actually on Instagram about the whole thing ending. Actually, I'm going to quickly read out here. Uh, it's a post here that's on Hype Beast. So it says here, uh, small fact, personally, I'm visually obsessed with the combination of black sneaker and white swoosh with white laces. Hence, every edition of the last ever 10 came as such. Okay, cool. So I'm assuming what, so so are we going to get, are we going to get uh, a 10 of the of the Jordan 1 then? I'm assuming everything is going to come in black and white, he's saying maybe essentially, which might be quite cool. Um, I think we still got a couple left, right? They're still they're gonna they're gonna ship. I think they're gonna sell that uh, blue, the sort of like a cobalt blue Air Force One. I think it's gonna tie in with the uh, uh, the retrospective he's gonna be doing in the Chicago. Um, I don't know where it is. Somewhere in Chicago, he's, he's gonna do an exhibition next year. Retrospective of kind of all his work so far. So for instance, for someone to do a retrospective in six years' time, right? Usually six years are not that long in a creative landscape, right? You Sometimes, depending on how you work, you can maybe spend a year plus on a project. So you can probably only have six things to show. But in a calendar year, I'd hate to imagine, I'd hate to think of the amount of things he's made. T-shirts alone, right? Imagine the amount of stuff he's made. So it would be cool to see what a retrospective looks like overall. Um, but yeah, maybe that might mean we might see everything in black and white. So we might see a few of those Jordans um, in black and white too. But yeah... Um, I'm not. I'm not mad. This ending. I think maybe it was kind of coming to an end anyway. I'm kind of getting a bit tired of it. It's all like the easy 350s. I think maybe in in design terms or in terms of what he wanted. I think overall, I remember hearing a few of the talks that Virgil had in terms of um, the lectures and stuff. I remember he mentioned like if you can't get a pair of these, I want you to copy some of the things that I did in terms of taking off the swoosh, moving things around. You could do them with just a general, a generic, a generic kind of white shoe of the same model. But I think overall, it's not. I don't think he had maybe the same. Um, I don't know, intention as maybe Kanye did with the 350s, right? I think Kanye said for the longest time he wanted everyone in the world to wear 350s, right? So even though the market has been flooded with Yeezy 350s, I think the long-term goal is to kind of have Yeezy 350s be the, the new Air Force One, right? A shoe that kind of, you know, uh, transcends any kind of celebrity and it's just like a shoe people like because it looks good with outfits, it's comfortable, blah, 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 blah. But I think the Nike 10 was a bit more of a special bespoke sort of product right a project of for instance like it was kind of a chance for him to kind of flex his creative muscles to show that you know when given the resources like i said before with the louis something everyone was kind of complaining oh why did they give it to him for it's not gonna be good i was like yes it will be good because we've seen what he can do on his own terms right it's a bit rough on the edges right it's a bit happy it's a bit slapdash but there's something there right he obviously gets it he obviously has his finger on the pulse he's obviously very he's obviously very adept at taking what's happening in the country cultural zeitgeist and kind of somehow uh filtering it down and putting it all into a product he's able to do that it's a very particular talent so if you give him the resources if you give him the the ability to manufacture stuff at the highest level whether it's louis vuitton or nike he's gonna hit out of the park and we've seen it so far but i'm happy to see they've ended it um or he's ended the 10 collaboration of course with nike because they're they they have no scruples they are definitely going to take some of the um models that he's done and kind of iterate them out to gr level they always do that right they're gonna you know you've, you've already seen it with nike copying the kind of deconstructed look on their on their skate highs they did recently but for sure you're going to see elements of the deconstructedness uh dna that he's kind of imbued on these collections applied to other shoes you're going to see them kind of iterated out so you're going to kind of see weird sort of like fugazi ish type looking uh, shoes that look like off-white but they're not off-white collaborations for sure but i'm happy to see he kind of reined it in and kind of like you know what that chapter's closed and we move on forward now um i'm interested to see what happens going forward happy to see if he's gonna do any collaboration with other um, um sportswear brands whether or not it's just an exclusive deal with nike or if he's gonna do something with adidas i think would be quite cool even maybe kind of maybe given uh a kind of dead brand a bit of a revitalization maybe giving them um 
a kind of stimulus pack. I can imagine like a high tech, for instance, who are making loads of kind of really stacked, uh, you know, trendy shoes at the moment, right? They've got a couple at the moment I saw on some websites. I think I saw might as well on Tresbian. They're kind of iterating that. So it might be cool to see him do a kind of high tech collaboration, kind of go completely left field, maybe do something with feeler that's coming out now. That's, you know, every second girl that I see walking around and wears a pair of feelers. I couldn't have it. Everyone's got a pair of those fucking things. So that I couldn't I could imagine that thing happening. There's a lot of scope, but I'm happy to see it kind of ended it in that regard. I'm happy to when things kind of end as well. It's good, you know, the collaboration is going on for years and years and years can kind of get a little bit boring. And it also makes the stuff that you have from that collaboration a bit special, right? I've got a pair of the Jordans. I've got a pair, I've got two pairs of the Jordans, right? I've got some Air Force Ones, which I'm going to get actually soon, sorry. I'm going to buy them soon if I actually have them in my possession now, but I've got a pair of Jordans. So it's nice that I know that that thing is a bit special now, right? It's not, not everyone's going to have it. It's nice to know that. And I think going forward, um, it'll be interesting to see what he does with the other projects. But yeah, that's ended. That's over. Nike 10 is done. So if you've got a pair or if you're looking to get a pair, get them now because I'm sure the price will flip in quadruple as people will start to learn that maybe it's not going to be the same again.